Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Terraria. Let's move along. Um sorry, mental <laughs> breakdown. Anyway, so last episode we faced off against the twins and it was close, but we came out ahead. This episode we're hoping to face off against the mechanical worm. Uh, along with some other stuff. So it's right now well it's 220 we can see in the bottom left. It's probably not enough time to fight the destroyer so I'm gonna wait till the following night time. So since we have a little bit of extra time I'll fill you guys in on some of the stuff I did in between last time and now. Uh, first I made myself a new accessory, a warding mana flower. You, um, I went and explored the jungle a little bit and you can find a nature's gift there. That combined with a mana potion gives you the warding mana flower. Now, you can read the you can read the text to see what it does. 8% reduced mana usage. That's not bad, but automatically used mana potions when needed. So that means these mana potions will just automatically get slurped down when I run low on mana, which will make fighting the boss a lot easier. <clears throat> Additionally, I got myself an amber mosquito, which summons a pet if you see this cute little uh, dinosaur here behind me, that is my new pet. He is Fido. I shall name him Fido. Anyway, an upgrade for my turtle. A uh, couple other things. I got lucky with a few accessories. I found oh, it's a sash of speed in the jungle. When you combine it with your specter boots, you get violent lightning boots. Basically everything the same except now I move even faster. Really kind of nice. And I finally found a lava charm. What the lava charm does, actually, you know, let's show you. So the lava charm by itself just lets you go down and bathe in lava for a little bit. Like dr the drowning countdown, except it's lava. It's not as long, but hey, it's something. Um, when you combine it with your water walking boots, you get lava waders. I can now walk on lava. Ah, this should be good enough. So, I can walk on lava, take no damage, and if I fall in, you see this countdown? I have until then to get out of the lava without taking any damage. It's wonderful. So now at this point, hell is not dangerous. So those are a couple of the things I've done just in prepping, getting ready. Also, I've expanded my mushroom biome over here. So now it's a full mushroom, you can tell by the background. I built a little mushroom home so that... Where did he go? He's here somewhere. Oh, there he is. He blends in. So the mushroom dude moved in. So, see this guy here? Chantrella. Mushroom friend. And actually, he sells something I want. He sells a couple things. Dark blue solution is used in the... Clintaminator, which I'll talk about later. It's a way of basically spraying a biome on. Um, so he sp he sells mushroom biome. A strange glowing mushroom summons a baby version of him as a pet. The auto hammer, which I'm going to buy right now, is used to turn chlorophyte bars into shroomite bars. Um, I'll have to explain both of those, which we'll get to. Mushroom cap makes a hat. Hamush is a hammer. And the mushroom spear is actually a pretty decent spear but I'm not interested in them. So, I'm just gonna set the auto hammer up and that we'll talk about, let's see, where are we We'll set it up here. There we go. And it just cranks away. Couple other things. I got Chlorophyte. Um, so, you're, so with my remaining hallowed ore, I made myself a pickaxe axe so I can now mine chlorophyte. Chlorophyte is the next tier of ore and chlorophyte can be crafted with blue mushrooms into shroomite which is another tier of armor that specializes in <sighs> specializes uh, in ranged combat. Sorry for that. But so part of how I got so much uh, shroomite or chlorophyte rather and I will make chlorified armor probably before I... Uh, we'll see how much I can make. But... I picked up a little trick that you guys might find pretty cool down here. So, notice the background. 
the dark gray background means I'm in the underground cavern level. If you put mud blocks in the underground cavern level and plant a chlorophyte ore, if you remember last episode I said chlorophyte grows over time, I double checked that. It does as long as you're below a certain level. So all of my blocks started like this. One ore in the middle. Then you just kind of wait for it to grow out, harvest the chlorophyte ore, and repopulate the mud. It's important that you use mud, nothing else will be corrupted by the chlorophyte. The chlorophyte won't take over anything else but mud. But if you do this, and the reason it's a 5x5 five five brick is chlorophyte grows out to a certain cap, and reading on the forums, 5x5 five five is what was recommended, so that's just what I did. I haven't done much experimentation here, but it seemed pretty. Well. It seems to work pretty well. And as a result, I've got this lovely chlorophyte farm. Which, yes, I've got enemies fighting me, but this is still a lot safer than the jungle. Getting as much, yeah, getting even a little bit of ore to start this farm up with a royal pig. So, that, that is, uh... A nice little trick you guys can use, farm yourself up some chlorophyte. And generally, I, I'm doing this just because I'm giving you guys an overview while I'm talking, it's something to do. Generally you want to wait, just for your own ease, wait for it to be a bit more of the blocks covered, but it, to each their own. Oh, I got confused by that bad. There we go. Replace that. There we go. And see, I have 20 chlorophyte ore from that. If you just... And they'll continue growing as you go off and do your own thing on the map. So it's really pretty handy. Um, let's... Craft it on down. And let's look at, let's look at all the things we can make with chlorophyte. I'm going to actually go talk to the guide for that. Crafting. So, I don't think chlorophyte arc. Yeah, chlorophyte arc can only be used for bars. You can make a chlorophyte bullet, uh, which homes in on your enemy. Um, your chlorophyte armor, headgear, mask, helmet, depending on if you want melee, magic, or ranged. Um, yeah. So, chlorophyte armor. A drill, which is 200% pickaxe power. 200%, so it's not really much worth. The advantage here if you see the plus one range, so you can mine or drill one more away. Not really worth it unless you have a lot of spare chlorophyte. Chainsaw, again, plus one range, great axe. Jackhammer. I think... I don't know why you'd use the jackhammer to be completely honest. Yeah. Um, the chlorophyte shot bow is actually pretty cool. So. I do, well, it's about damage-wise equivalent with a repeater, because that's 37 without any modifiers. This has a lot of my modifiers right now. Or maybe some, any anyway, rate. It might be slightly less, but it fires, I think, three, maybe four arrows for the cost of one arrow. So, lower base damage, but you're getting multiple projectiles. It's a lot more damage. Really pretty useful. Um, the Saber and the Claymore are both, well, really high damage, and they shoot an orb out, which does more damage. Um, <clears throat> chlorophyte arrows, bounce back, and then we run into Spectre gear, which needs ectoplasm, which isn't available till after we beat Plantera. But Spectre gear is the best magic gear, and Spectre pickaxe gives you plus three range, so it's great for doing things at range. Turtle gear needs a turtle shell, which you get from killing those annoying turtles in the jungle. But if you look at the defense, 27, 21, 17, compared to 11, 15, 4. Turtles, I think turtle armor is the highest defense in the game. I could be wrong. Another advantage, when you have full turtle armor, when enemies hit you, you reflect damage back at them. 
So, you know, it's kind of like, it's a thorn aura, if you will. And then Shroomite made from a Chlorophyte Bar and 15 Glowing Mushrooms. <clears throat> so of these things, I think the first thing, I think we're going to want to start 24 and 18, so that's 18, 12, 30, 50, I need 64 total bars, I believe, for a full set of armor. Not horrible. Um, we'll, we'll see. Might not get to it this episode, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get started where we can, eh? Because alternatively, I don't really need the other gear. The only thing I'd be more tempted to make would be the Chlorified Shotbow right now. Uh, if I wanted to say fight the twins again, the shop was way better. But for now, let's just put it away. Uh, I believe we have to wait for nightfall to just to take out the destroyer. So that <clears throat> does put a slight dampener on things, just just slightly. I suppose we can go explore the jungle a little bit while we wait. Um, and yeah. Yeah, so as you can see, I move a lot faster. Also, there was a new item. So, Shroomite. <clears throat> sorry. Shroomite is used for the armor, which is great for anyone who has a shotgun, etc. Also, um. That also counts, not just that, but bow and arrow counts up for Shroomite. Uh, <clears throat> but also, there's a Shroomite hoverboard you can make with souls of flight and sight, I think. Maybe it's just flight. But it allows you to hover. It's kind of something you can use in place of the wings. So I might make that down the line, but I'm not gonna. Make no guarantees on that one. Also, now that I have destroyed a mechanical boss, the twins, I am eligible for any time day rises, there's a chance to get an all-day event called the Solar Eclipse. If that happens, I can get a broken hero sword, upgrade Excalibur, and make true Excalibur. The damage increase isn't significant, but true Excalibur every swing also shoots out a, a sword beam that does high damage. <clears throat> so it... it it's not amazing, but it is amazing at the same time. If that made any sense whatsoever. So, what time is it? It is 3 o'clock. We're almost there. Let's just go have some fun. So I made this lovely mushroom biome. The mushroom guy won't move in unless you have a full above ground mushroom biome. So that's why it's there and why I gave him a home away from home. Doo -doo -doo. So I haven't done extensive uh, mining or exploring of the jungle yet just because I personally feel that I'm not actually equipped well enough for it yet. The, the, the jungle is the second part. Well, it, it, it ranks right up there in difficulty of hard mode. And as always, if you see a turtle, run or kill it, don't ignore it. Or it will make sure that you have a very bad day. Also, one, I believe after you destroy Plantera. But once you destroy Plantera... Ooh, wow, that's a lot of modifiers on a useless weapon. Oh well. Ah! See what I mean about turtles? They give you a bad day. Also, you want to kill turtles because there's a chance they'll give you a coin. <clears throat> but, what I was saying? Oh yeah, once you destroy Plantera inside the jungle, you can pick up life fruit. And what life fruit do is, you remember how the heart crystals would give us 20 extra health? Well, life fruit will turn one heart yellow for the net effect of plus five max health. 
so it comes out to a total of you can get up to 500 max health if you can collect 20 light fruit. Not a lot, but every little bit counts. So, something to keep in mind. Actually, I don't remember. I can find it before the night. Before it gets much later here. I do apologize for the uh, lack of the lighting. That is why I'm swinging my sword as much as I am. To try to at least let you guys get a glimpse of what's going on. But I needed some sun potions. Those would be useful. But anyway. I'm gonna see if I can find the uh, beehive that I have found once before. Because that's definitely an easy spot. Okay, so actually I can talk about something here. See this little glowing um, orb right there? That pink orb that might be there. See that pink orb that's glowing? That right there is a Plantera bulb. If you destroy it with a hammer, it summons Plantera. I'm not going to do it right now because that would murder me in about five seconds flat. But when you're ready, that's how you summon Plantera. You find one of these bulbs and you smash it. If Plantera kills you, another bulb will spawn. Actually, several of these bulbs spawn in the jungle. So you can keep on killing Plantera. Actually, while I'm here, I see a lovely deposit of chlorophyte. I'm gonna grab it. But we, that orb, that bulb there will not move. So now I do know, and I believe it's even marked on my map. Yeah, Plantera's bulb. So I can I can go back to it when I feel that I am actually ready to fight Plantera, which will probably be once I have one more tier of armor, be that Shroomite or Tur. Not entirely sure yet. I'll have to figure out what strategy I want to use against Plantera. But we have our A lot of so this is a lot of what you'll be doing in the uh, jungle initially. You just get the sweet sweet chlorophyte. And actually, a little tip: when you mine it out, leave one leave one piece of ore. It will convert mud, and you'll come back and find even more chlorophyte. It's basically you know the the idea of doing what I did with the farm already. Iron, iron. I'm just looking for the beehive that I know is around here somewhere. Huh. Can't really find it. And I am dying, so we're just gonna get out of here. Oh. <laughs> Note to self, when you're exploring in the jungle, don't turn on the map and just sit there. Anyway, perfect timing. Yes. Let me heal up with the nurse, and we have a boss to fight. So, again, my strategy for the boss is playing these lovely uh, notes. They, if you click close to you, they go slowly, farther out they go further. And the goal is to hit every single segment of the destroyer. Additionally, oh, I don't have much inventory space for you. Oh well, eat a cookie. And let's summon a worm. There we go. So as you can see, that does great work against them. Oh yeah. One thing I forgot to do before this fight started, I'm going to swap out my Lava Waders so I don't need them during the fight for the Warding Mana Flower. So that now, I automatically suck down Potion when needed. Up proactively when you're fighting. Uh, it, 
basically, if you have the health base that you could fully benefit from a potion, you might as well use it so that cooldown is not again. You don't want to wait until the last second. And I'm actually being a little sloppy here. Ideally, you wait to see when um, he comes lunging up and just load up on... Feel like that. You just shoot off a string. And look at all that damage. I have um yeah. This makes the fight a lot easier. You can use other similar uh, magic spells that penetrate and hit multiple people. Uh, if you're feeling brave or really buff, you could just be down there and take them away with a sword. Um, I am neither brave nor buff anymore, so... We almost have dead, ladies and gentlemen. Also, he, as you hit his segments, more of those... There we go. Now we should see where he dropped all the loot. I think that's it right there. Yes! So we got Hallowed Bar, Soldier's Might, and actually... Oh, let's just heal up a little bit, shall we? So since it's Christmas time, instead of harp you have candy canes and sugar plums instead of... Nice. So, that went really well. Let's look at a few of the things we got. We got Souls of Might and Hallowed Bar. Those are the two big things that we got out of this that we really care about. I'm gonna throw away a few things that I really don't care about. Oh! I got, oh that's cool. One of the Christmas presents gave me a dog whistle. So now I have a puppy! Because Christmas, everyone wants a puppy. Yeah, I got a puppy. Too jealous. I don't need jungle grass seeds. I don't need dirt and stones. Okay, so we got the souls of might, which we can use on other things. I'm actually going to. We still have a decent amount of daylight. Nine time left. So. Well, that was off to a great start. So we just kind of sit here and wait for him. We know that he's coming. He's already at half health. Um, so the goal is you want the you want the music notes to travel only as fast as absolutely necessary. Other players, if they're constantly colliding with them, they do the most damage. They every single segment, all sorts of damage. And of course, don't forget to take the time to uh, heal up. Oh, dearie dear. There we go. There we go. So now I can figure out. Oi. Well, we did kill the destroyer, so that's the good news. I need to figure out where he died. I think the stuff drops where his head is at death, so that means it probably dropped itself off somewhere in the mountain. Fortunately, souls glow, so there shouldn't be too difficult to hunt for. So let's just... There we go. So there's the souls. And hallowed bar. Good. And some greater healing potions. Okay. So that is the destroyer, and probably one of the easiest ways to take the destroyer out. That was pretty painless. We were able to take him out twice in one night. Really useful. So at this point, if I wanted to, I could upgrade to full hallowed armor. It's not a huge advantage from what I currently have, so I might hold off until uh, 
chlorophyte. But let's just quickly go through and clean up my inventory. And then we'll take a look at my lava back. Okay. So quick stack a few more things away real quick. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I know this part's a little bit more boring, but a clean inventory is a good inventory. I don't need those. I'll keep those. Too many items to choose from. At any rate, stuff, 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 stuff. <laughs> I know, really interesting. I'm gonna keep the dog whistle for now with me, with my puppy. I died, so I'd have to resummon him. He's around here somewhere. There he is. All right, so I got souls of might. So the question is, what good are they? I mean, are they any good at all? The answer is yes. You need them to craft any keys. So that's the first one you'll want. Um, we still need a temple key and a frozen key mold, but we'll get there. You need souls of might to craft the mega shark. So mini shark upgrades to the mega shark. A lot more damage, fast speed, kind of cool. And then light discs, uh, soul of light and soul of might. There you go. And the light discs are actually kind of cool. Um, stacks up to five. Not bad, but. By and large, I don't think I'll actually be using... I'll probably... Ah, probably not really be using those Souls of Might until I need them to make a key. So for now, we just put them away somewhere safe. So that, ladies and gentlemen, was the Destroyer. Alright. I'm gonna have to pause it. There we go. So the next thing we're really wanting, we're hoping for a solar eclipse, and our goal is next is going to be gather up as much chlorophyte as we can so that we can start making armor. I'm close, I need 10 more, 10, 10 more chlorophyte bar to make full chlorophyte armor. At that point, I could try taking on Skeletron for Souls of Fright, or I might even be able to try taking on Flash Zero. That won't be this episode, though. I can I can definitely tell you guys that now. But we'll be able to get set up for Plantera. So let's just clean up our mine. Come on down here. And actually, after this, we'll probably go explore the jungle some more because this is. This is a nice zero risk way of getting your fix of chlorophyte, but it's a wee bit slow. So. It's it's useful. Oh, I say slow and it got insulted. Uh, especially if you're having a really hard time, this is a, a great way to get a, a technological leg up, so to speak. Yeah, you can see over here, this is a great one. I think if I have full chlorophyte armor and a chlorophyte weapon, I should be able to fight Flantera fairly well. Yeah, this one really a lot of the mud uh, converted quickly. And always remember when you're clearing house, remember to leave one ore so that, you know, it comes back. Yeah, like any good gardener, you don't eat all the seeds, you keep a few to plant. And I'm actually running a little low on mud, so I'm going to definitely need to go uh, roaming through the jungle to replace my mud. That, that's kind of entertaining. So because I'm running out on mud, I'm just gonna do that. I do believe I have uh, another thing about- also, I think if you're just near water, you can make mud out of dirt blocks. 
I think. It would stand to reason at any rate. Um, Star Anise is <laughs> something you get from treasure chest. It, it, it's like, yeah, <laughs> ninja cookies. I think the developer really doesn't like Christmas food. He, he seems to think they make better weapons than tasties. I, I can't always disagree. Some some Christmas food is, uh, it means well, but you know, I've encountered a few fruitcake that I just can't get along with. That almost sounded like I was talking about people. Well, I've encountered some people that are like fruitcake that I haven't gotten along with either, so. The feeling's mutual, I'm sure. Off to the jungle! Enough rambling. Well, there's never enough rambling. You guys are stuck with it. Oh. So, at this point, I think I don't have a I might have a... Something hit me with. Okay. A mechanical skull would be something I could summon, so I get souls of fright. I will eventually need to fight um, Skeletron Prime to get those souls of fright if I ever want to unlock the chests in the dungeon. So that is definitely something I'll want to do. Ah, uh, so, but I'll kind of wait and see if I get lucky and just something drops for me there. Because Skeletron Prime is a pretty nasty boss too, although I think he won't be too bad with the gear I have. One can only help, right? Over here we have... So, the basic plan is, the next step is killing Plantera. Once Plantera has been defeated, then that makes the dungeon go into uber- Just like, so defeating the mechanical boss made the jungle go into uber mode, defeating Plantera makes the dungeon go into crazy mode. And that's where... No, so actually, okay. It does make the dungeon go into crazy mode and you can farm up for stuff. But also, defeating Plantera, I do believe, drops the jungle key. Which lets you go into the Lizard Temple. I don't know if I found- yes, I did find it. Okay, many episodes ago. And the Lizard Temple is where the final, for now at least, boss. So, that's kind of a, a rough roadmap of where we're going. How? Welcome to the jungle where everything beats the living daylights out of you. So I'm, what I'm kind of doing, I'm, I'm partially just running around. I'm looking for chlorophyte. I'm also looking, I'm still looking actually for the beehive. I, I, I want to say it was around here somewhere, and I'm, I'm going to make a, 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 you know, I'm going to live aggressive or dangerously here again. It was somewhere over here. Is that it? I think that's the Lizard Temple. Yeah. Let's play the MS Iron. <sighs> I remember finding the beehive and just not having time to look into it. Now, see this is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is why you don't put off till tomorrow what you should do today. It will come back and haunt you. That's it, maybe that's it. I think that might be it down there. We'll, we'll give it a shot. So where am I? All right. Kill the turtle. Additionally, if you ever want to make the turtle shell armor, you need to kill a lot of turtles to, make, to get a turtle shell. Oh, hey, look. Yeah, there's that. So, actually, that was a bit right there. So I am low enough now in the jungle that chlorophyte spawn, so when I see it, I will take advantage and grab myself all the chlorophyte. I'm also grabbing some mud because I need to keep my own farm stock. And it's not like 
to in the back of it in the jungle. Um, additionally, if uh, apparently just having jungle grass near mud underground, there is a slight, slight chance of it randomly spawning for a fight. So that's kind of cool. Detour here for a second here to show you guys highlights. If you see these bricks over here on the left of me, that you can't see well because there's no light, shame on me. Anyway, these bricks over here are the Lizard Temple. There is a door somewhere on one side of it to let me in. I can't mind through it because it's too tough. That's what the, the jungle key will open when I get it from killing. I believe plenty. Just giving you guys a heads up of the long and winding road ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, we found the beehive. So the beehive is definitely an easy mode boss. Or, or there's a boss in the beehive. Really? Oh no, 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 no. Well, the, 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 there's a boss in the beehive. It's the queen bee. She's an easy mode boss. Had the turtle not ruthlessly murdered me. I hate you, turtle. We would have... Yeah, that, that. At any rate, I think I have enough chlorophyte for full armor, so that at least is happy, right? Yeah? <laughs> we'll have to go back to the beehive another day, it just doesn't seem to want to pan out. So, <clears throat> it costs 12 gear, so I can make two, two pieces of headgear right now. Um, probably I'm going to have a chlorophyte mask for melee damage. And I'll probably make I'll probably make headgear as a mage because that's my other major form of damage at the moment. Oh, I could make yeah, we'll go with it for now. Since I'm currently there, we go. And let's take off the parka. So you guys can actually see what I look like. So the first thing, the chlorophyte set bonus. Summons a powerful leaf crystal to shoot nearby enemies. This leaf crystal that's hovering above my head will just automatically <clears throat> take pot shots at my enemies. Not <clears throat> super, super effective, but hey, it's damage and it's uh, free, so I'm not going to complain. I'm trying to figure out what I can just. I'm trying to clean up my inventory a little bit more here. Anyway, I will show off some enemies. Additionally, we can look at the defense difference. 11 to 13, 18, 15, 7, 4. So, a fairly sizable defense increase, which always is nice. 16% um, manic damage, 16, 7, and 100, as a, and this is 16. Reduce mana usage by 17%, 16% increased mana, magic damage. So this gave me a critical strike chance, this makes me a more efficient caster. I'll, I'll take it. So yeah, now it costs me 3 mana per magical harp. Still with a 32% chance to get a crit. That's pretty good. And I think crit's like double damage. Right, I need to find somewhere to deposit. And then 25 to 23. 8% melee damage, critical strike chance, and 8% melee speed, 16% increased melee damage, and medical 
increased melee critical strike chance. Not bad. We're just gonna open up a new chest, and I'll I'll get motivated to be clean later. Okay. Throw my leggings in here. Parka. Cool. All right. Let's go find an enemy real quick so you can see this effect. Where are the enemies? Seriously. Sit here long enough? Will they come? They better. Uh, at this point, there we go. So you can see it just shooting away. It actually does shoot at a decent little clip. So that's kind of cool. Um... At this point, I could actually... You know what? Oh, the air is getting colder around you. Looks like my decision was made for me. That little message means that we're about to fight Skeletron Prime. Oh, let's see if I have anything else to help me out here. Swiftness... Hunter... I do not want to... Arrow speed and damage, if I were using arrows, that would be great to do. I should have actually taken that when I was fighting the twins, that would have helped. Night Owl, Thorns. Thorns can be useful. There we go. And if I am fighting, actually that's something I will need. Where did I put it? I need my nature's gift. Rewarding mana flyer. There we go. Put it up here. There. Cool. I'm about to fight another boss. Sorry to be a little less talkative about it to make sure I got it when I needed done. Um, so I'm equipping my mana flower so I don't have to worry about chugging mana potions when I need them. It will automatically consume it. Nope. Nothing useful there. Do I have any cookies? Cookie, cookie, cookie. No cookies. Oh well. Uh, cookies or any food? Yeah. Okay. Meet Skeleton Prime, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna lure him away from my other people. So, Old Skeleton has two hands, Skeleton Prime has four, and they do a lot more stuff. My uh, approach to this is just spamming. Oh, look at that. My approach is going to be simple. Spam. And try to survive. So one hand shoots bombs, one hand shoots lasers. He did that, you still it is all for I'm not entirely sure what a good way to fight this guy is because he's just a pain. So we're gonna try a trick here. He moves quickly, but if I'm fast enough. Dang it! That would have worked great if. I'm just running for my dear sweet life, in case you guys are curious why I'm doing what I'm doing here. Anyway, what my plan was, was to warp to the nurse, heal, and then get away before she killed them. Unfortunately, well, unfortunately I'm broke, so I can drop it off. What I can try doing is hitting him with a few of these. You never know. So, no, that was accidental, I assure you all. Dang it! So, the Aura Halcom, the bow, he 
Reaper's defense for a period of time. So he takes more damage for now. I am almost out of mana potions. So we're gonna switch over to my bow now because I'm running out of options. On the bright and, and, and similar there we go. One thing now. And so similar to the other Skeletron, you don't I don't think you have to destroy his hands, but it gets much easier when he has fewer appendages trying to rip your head off. So. Almost got rid of the laser. I don't honestly know if I'm going to be able to kill him before the night falls. Alright, let's do this. Another hand down. Almost got him. Alright, now he's down to just one hand. Excellent. All that's left is him. Whew! Ladies and gentlemen, that was a fight. Meet Skeleton Prime. Pain in the rear. We almost got down to 1500 health. Now, if you don't defeat Skeletron before daylight breaks, he comes at you in a Kamikaze attack, but ha, huh, we did it. Hella bars, healing potions, presents, <sighs> and souls of fright. There you go, guys. The unexpected bonus for you all. Now I need a lot more mana potions. I think the wizard sells them, though. Huh. That was a fight, all right. Shop. Yeah, great amount. There. Now I should be good for the foreseeable future. Souls of Fright? Let's see what I can make with them. The keys, the flamethrower. It's not too bad, actually. Uh, the flamethrower actually um, is pretty. Is actually quite good against the destroyer because you sh basically you're spitting out flame that does rapid tons of damage. It uses gel as ammo, as it said there. So, and gel's pretty easy to come by. Neptune's shell allows you to be a merfolk. You can breathe underwater. It's kind of cool. A uh, naughty present summons the frost. The frost moon. That's new. Um, silk ectoplasm. Can't do it yet because I need ectoplasm. But hmm, that's a new event. I'll have to look into it. <clears throat> if it requires ectoplasm, that means it's post Plantera. So frightening. All things considered, though, that wasn't. That wasn't bad. I survived. We we did it, ladies and gentlemen. We did it. No, I'm gonna drop that off. So, the next step is going to be a Plantera fight. Uh, there's... And so Plantera spawns right there in the jungle. You don't really get much of a chance to prepare any sort of arena for the Plantera fight, which is part of what makes that fight so challenging, I suppose you could say. Uh, 
da, da, da. But that is the next stage of our evolution. That or I can show you guys the bee. Maybe I can just quickly get to the bee. That would be educational, entertaining, and fun. I think we'll save Plantera for the next episode. Unless I'm feeling really, really lucky, but... This has been a pretty full episode. We've fought the Destroyer. We've looked into chlorophyte mining techniques, and we had an unexpected guest appearance by the Skel by Skeletron Prime. Yeah, I, I guess I, w I did say I was just gonna hope he showed up randomly, so. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, be careful what you say. The video games can hear you. Oh yeah, let's put my waiters back. <sighs> Once more into the breach. Pretty sure this is a dead end. Oh, yeah, 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 However, not anymore. What was once a dead end is now flooding something else. First, you don't succeed, put out all your torches. Alright, so this time, I'm not going to pause to talk outside of my destination. We're just gonna go for it. And hope no ninja mutant turtles. That's, that's it. They're mad that I was the ninja tortoise earlier. They're like, hey man, that's our copyright. You can't steal that. See, they're just bad sports. They're grumpy. I think that's what it was. Grumpy bad sports. Oh yeah, see, I just got a major gift. Basically, just by cutting grass, you'll pick them up here. It's kind of cool. And you can see during the... Really? Oh, that was sad. You can see during the boss fight also that shooting the, um... That little leaf crystal above my head was pretty useful. Uh... Maybe I should do this after all. Another trick you can do is... Because I'm on a smaller world, it's not as important. If you're playing on a large world, something you absolutely want to do is set up a little bed over by the jungle, set up a bed over by the, uh, the dungeon. So when you die, you spawn right back there, and you don't have to spend two to three minutes just la-di-da-di-da, -da -da, look at me. Fortunately, since it's a small, a medium-sized world we're playing on, and I've got a lot of move-quick type gear, it's not as painful. But, if I didn't have this gear, it would be a lot worse. Actually, crazy turtle. In case you guys are wondering what I'm about to do, because I have a pick that mines really quickly and I no longer take long damage, I can drill a new bee evader. Might, may or may not be on camera. Crazy. This is one nice, so let, let's take a moment and reflect on how long it used to take to drill down. Remember when we had that old pick that would go tick, 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 and it would take like two or three picks, you know, per? Yeah, that would be the best. Yeah. Incidentally, once you ha if you're playing with a friend, what you do is both of you stand here and stack, and one person mines the left brick, one person mines the right brick, and you actually fall so fast the water can't keep up. It's really nice. We're now drilling down through, uh, Hollow. I actually kind of want to get some of the water, but I don't know. <coughs> Briefly, I'm just going to dig a false hole here because I want to get rid of the water. Water is useful for, you know, negating falling damage if you take falling damage. But now that I have wings, falling damage is nothing more than that. Oh, 
Oh, we're going to do a little bit of underground hollow here. Nothing wrong with that. Um, sorry for that lap there. It's kind of hypnotic. See just how, like, it's like a mini game. See how quickly you can mine. Alright. So, we're going to pause for a second here. See. Oh, hey. Chlorophyte! So I have full chlorophyte armor, but you need chlorophyte bars to make shroomite. Um, so, and I, if I want all the other gear, I still need a lot of chlorophyte. Okay! So, there we go. Nearly there. Briefly, we're, we're here, beehive there, we're almost to the beehive, and the advantage is, if I die again, I can fall down the hole and poof, we're right back with the bees. Um, although, you don't want to let the water directly into the bees, uh, the bee beehive is filled with honey, which interacts with lava and water. And it interacts differently with lava and water. So you kind of want to be careful. Because flowing honey will change into other stuff. Just something to keep in mind. So I think at this point, I'm going to let all this water flow through. Kill the Illuminati. The Illuminati. Story. Heal up. Beehive. We're breaking in. Breaking up hive causes bees to spawn and it causes honey to fall. Honey gives you life regeneration, but you move very slowly while you're in honey. Uh, so, something to keep in mind. shooting at me because he's those projectiles he shoots stay around can hit you multiple times and they go they, they go through stuff it just not something you want to deal with anyway so bees are swarming out as I'm opening up the hive but because I'm just brutal bees don't last very long The land of milk and honey, mainly honey. No milk. Here. So you can actually notice you go ridiculously slow in honey. You can drown in honey. And the, yeah. If I I should have brought a bucket or a bottle. Oh, well. uh, you can bucket honey just like water or anything else. Um. Oh dear, dear. No, 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 no. So if you look, <laughs> put a torch on. so notice this honey just went hard, honey block. That's what happens if honey encounters water. You get honey block. If honey encounters, if honey encounters lava, you get crispy. I can't remember what all of that. Is. And you move very, very slowly on a honey block, because it's you know, what you'd expect, right? Okay, 
Cool. This here is... Well, I just opened it. Anyway, that's something the Queen Bee. As you can see, Queen Bee over here. She only has like... Yeah, she barely does damage to me. And she's got 4,000. Four Nothing. 3,400 health. As you can see, very much an easy mode boss. She's spitting out these at me, but... There we go. Queen Bee's dead. No fuss, no muss. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Queen Bee. She dropped the Hive Wand. Places hives. So you can use that to place your blocks that you got. Um, and it looks... It, it's a different material appearance. So... Let's just warp home from here. So this... Oh. The Beekeeper. I want that. 25 melee damage. Summons killer bees after striking your foe. Some chance of causing confusion. Actually... For the, when you can first get it, it's pretty cool. Summon killer bees that attack your enemy, it can confuse your enemy, and 25 damage in um, easy mode is pretty respectable, all things considered. So, that's cool. That's warp home. Drop off the beekeeper that got a dual hook from the mimic. Nothing too special there. But, so. The Queen Bee, ladies and gentlemen. Normally a lot harder if you fight her in easy mode. Because you fight her in a confined space. But if you forget about her until you're already in hard mode, all of a sudden you go, Man, such a refreshingly simple engagement. Especially when you're busy trying to psych yourself up. Oh, looks like Queen Bee dropped bottled honey. Bee nade. Explodes into a swarm of bees. All sorts of fun stuff. I'm gonna drop all this off. Bottle Tony restores 80 life, and I think it can be mixed in something else. Oh, uh, we can. Oh, uh, let's put, you know, there's a guide. Let's ask him, eh? Okay, so you need bottled honey to make an abination. Abimination. Abibidoo. Honey block, crispy honey block, stinger, hive, obsidian, and bottled honey. This is how you can summon the queen bee if you want to fight her again. Um, there you go. You can make bottled honey anytime you're standing in honey with a uh, g empty glass bottle. You can you can just go poof, and you have everything you need. So something to keep in mind. Huh. Yeah, that's right. Alright. So that, I think we've reached a reasonable stopping point for this episode. Uh, unless we wanted to try to take on Plantera, but I really... I don't think I'm ready yet, although I don't really know what I can do to improve. So I might... Ideally, actually, you'd want turtle armor... Maybe... Uh, Shroomite if you're de dealing with a bunch of arrows. So, I mean, it, 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 there are some improvements. Although, the magic harp just might be what I need. As you can see, my mine here is growing nicely. It really is kind of useful. I mean, that's it's basically... Not quite as quick as going to the jungle for all my ore, but this is a lot safer. I don't have ninja turtles trying to kill me because they're jealous about me stealing their copyright. Those guys are poor sports. Oh, maybe they just want pizza. I don't know. Anyway. I think for this episode, we're going to call it where we are. And next episode, I'll try to prep up and face off against Plantera. If you guys have anything else you in particular want to see, let me know. I might also look into the Frost Moon event. See what that's all about. Oops, didn't mind, mind that one. 
But I think that Frost Moon was a new event that was just added. Uh, considering it requires Ectoplasm, which isn't available until after you defeat Plantera, I'm afraid. So it'll it definitely won't happen until after we get to Plantera. This is something nice about the little leaf pod. It shoots at all my enemies, so I don't have to worry about them. Definitely a nice, easy way of getting your. So I got, you know, not a lot. Four Shroomite from that. You can easily increase your guard beside it, or four Chlorophyte. But it worked. No fuss, no muss. I'll probably mine up some more Chlorophyte because you guys don't need to watch me sit there mining Chlorophyte all day. So that's probably what I'll do off camera. But I think I think we're pretty good. We we kill off some more bad guys, and the next step. Actually, yeah. So the next step will be getting ready to fight Plantera and unlock the hard mode dungeon and the Lizard Temple. Until then, take care of yourselves, enjoy your holiday season, and we'll see you guys next time. Take care.